Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? The King of Lightning here today bringing you guys and gals Nanatsu no Taizai, The Seven Deadly Sins, Episode 6. And I think today, Episode 7 comes out too. I'm not too sure. Either comes out today or comes out on Monday or Tuesday. Whatever. Point here is that Episode 6 is now. It's this video. Episode 7, if it comes out today, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do the review either on Monday or on Wednesday. So, regardless of that, this episode, let me go to the basics. Animation overall, pretty good, as usual. When it comes to the fights, especially, duh. When it comes to the pacing, not too fast, not too slow, like the story of the three bears, uh, porridge, cold, porridge, hot, but then you have just the right temperature, that's the way it is. So... The pacing overall, pretty good. When it comes to the story progression, the main thing here is this. You have Bon being introduced into the fold, Sin of Fox, Sin of Greed, whatever. And then you have the defeat of three of the weird fangs. Like, I think there's like, I forgot how many there were. I know that Glogius, whatever his name is. He retreated along with his disciple, or his apprentice, whatever, his student, Jericho. They all bailed. The prison. But then you have the defeat. I think they actually died, too. Like, they bonafide died. I think Jew died. The one that was manipulating, and I fucking called it. When it came to the previous review, I said, the kid with the fucking bell, he's probably ruined. And lo and behold, Notre Dame, I, I saw that shit like 15 miles away, like, oh, yeah, mm, psychic over here. I need a crystal ball and shit. Predict your future and give me your fucking money. But <laughs> Ruin, who was the kid, got taken out. Meliodas gave this guy some serious damage. Like, we don't get to see his face, but... The amount of blood coming from the armor, I'm like, yo, he's like, this guy's done. Like, this guy, like, I don't know what... Meliodas punched through his armor, the dude starts flexing. And as he's flexing, he goes from a white dude to a black dude. I'm like, the fuck? I don't, that was weird. But then he gets the, you know, he gets the, boom, right, right there in the gut. And just the amount of blood that comes... Out of the armor. Yeah, this guy's dead. Then you have the one chick, I forgot her name. The one who can control the bugs. She, I don't think is dead. No, no, she's not dead, but she, clearly she was taken out. Like, she's done. Like, she will no longer be able to fight. At least I think so. I mean, if that's the case, then we'll see her again probably in the future, but not anytime soon. So, they're taken out. The prison destroyed. And basically, you have... The whole wrapping up of this particular mini arc, where in which you have Bond going on their journey. Obviously, they have the meeting of the of the people. I don't know why the Doctor's still alive. Apparently, like Melio, I think that Melios did something to the Doctor because Hawk mentioned that the Doctor's wounds healed just like Melios's wounds healed in that same fashion. So I'm thinking, okay, so maybe Melios did something to the Doc, so the Doc somehow stayed alive, even though he should have been dead. Like, that was some weird shit right there. I'm thinking, so, are you, like, what the fuck? Like, like that threw me off. Meliodas has an unusual veil of mystery around his character. Like, he should be fairly old, but he's still a kid, at least appearance-wise. I got a feeling that he has some type of ability that either halts time or... Well, not halts time, but it... I want to say he has... I want to say that he has uh, eternal youth. That's what I want to say. But I'm not too sure. Because the crazy regen stuff I'm giving to fucking Bond. Bond, he's taking stabs through like the gut, through the arms, and he's just re like regenerating on the spot. Like whatever, like, not a big deal. I'm still doing me. So, I mean that those are my thoughts about those two in terms of like some powers that they may or may not have. Again, I'm not too sure, it's not confirmed. It's just my hypothesis, my theory. But it is within the realm of possibility, given the context of the story. So, why could that... Like, I don't know how that power could transfer over to the Doctor so he can, you know, stay alive. Again, I'm not too sure. 
So there are things we don't know, things that we kind of know, things we do know, but when it comes to the doctor being healed, I'm gonna say it's because of Meliodas and his direct actions. The same reason why he was able to survive that poison that was supposed to kill him. Now, the last part is the party, and they're just having fun, you know, eating food, and then out of nowhere, because like you have finally, like, it looks like Diane and Elizabeth, they finally like warmed up to one another, mainly Diane towards Elizabeth, because again, Diane, she is the sin of envy, but it looks like she's overcome her envy because she actually respected what Elizabeth did, taking in a taking a direct attack from Ruin and actually biting off the belt so the illusion would no would no longer affect Meliodas and Diane. So that was pretty cool on her part. And I'll give her that. She, you know, took that blow, Ruin's like, fuck you. He thought getting mad cocky, all of a sudden the bell's gone, and then Meliodas just takes his he just gone. Sent him flying. So, you know, that was good. So I will give her credit there. I mean, even though she's a crybaby, I will give her credit because she does have the courage, she does have the will to stand up in front of these insurmountable odds despite her lack of power, so I'll give her that at least. And then you have this weird event where like, like you have comets or meteorites, whatever, they're just crossing across space and they can all see it. A whole slew of comets and apparently it's, it's a signal of a holy war. I mean, that was random. I'm gonna lie to you, that was random as fuck. Like, oh yeah, Comet's Crossing. Uh, holy War! So, I mean, it is what it is. But apparently that's gonna wind up being the case. So it looks like now that we have Bond back in the fold, and we get to see King at the end of the, of the episode, after the ending. And I'm like, he's with my nigga Gil Thunder. So, I don't know why King is with my nigga Gil Thunder, but... My nigga Gil Thunder says, like, yo, don't disappoint me, or some shit like that. Like, don't try and go over to their side, King. And King's a kid, which, again, I don't know what's going on there. Like, Bond, in correlation to his wanted poster, looks relatively similar. Diane, the same way. Meliodas, fuck no. King, absolutely not. So, I don't know what's happening there, but something's happening there, which you wish we don't know. It's, at least at this point in time in the, in the anime... We know what's going on. So it's fascinating because the occurrences are interesting. And even though it's the wrapping up of one event, of one mini arc, it is built up towards another mini arc, which is going to obviously, or arc, because I don't know how long it's going to be, but whatever. It's probably going to be more or less focusing on King, obviously. And his situation and why he's a fucking kid as opposed to like a big dude. Who should be like in his late 40s, I think. So, whatever. We're going to find out. So, and why is this my nigga Gil Thunder? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Strange. Either way. So, the episode overall. Because that's it's really it. It's that simple. I mean, again, it was good in some occurrences, mainly the fights. It was pretty cool seeing how you had Golgius have some orb of eternal whatever fuck it like he had some orb that could basically entrap someone in this area forever apparently he mentioned something called tyrant dragons which i'm curious as to what tyrant dragons are they sound powerful as fuck i mean you have the word tyrant then you have the word dragon like oh shit tyrant dragon damn so they sound beastly but apparently not even 10 of these guys could break could break through this enchantment and you just have Bane and Meliodas fucking around, and they break out. They're just clapping hands and shit, headbutts, like punches, like Captain Bane, yeah, Captain Bane, or Bond, however you want to say it. And then have the arm wrestle, like, yeah, arm wrestle, we're rough, yeah, flex, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so the entire area's level. So, apparently these guys fucking around can easily, casually display more power than 10 Tyrant Dragons. And I mean, Tyrant Dragons, I don't know, like, they could be straight up bitches. They, they have a cool sounding name, but they could be like, straight up pussies. So, don't know. So either way, the episode overall, it was fun, obviously. And we did get somewhere. It's the wrapping up of one mini arc into another arc that we're going into that has hype, because King 
he seems to be the focus of the next upcoming arc. At least that's why I'm seeing it. And character-wise, the main thing here is for Diane and Elizabeth and finding out, I mean, because we, we already got a good idea of Bane's personality, so that was already covered. But it's just that whole, like, we're actually closer now because Elizabeth took the attack of Rue and did some cool-ass shit, and she got respect from Diane in the in that regard, even though she's weak. That's the way it is. So overall episode, I'm going to give it a good, I'm going to call it a day. So King of Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe. Peace! Have a nice damn day. And again, tomorrow, meaning Monday or Wednesday, I'll do episode 7 if it comes out, which probably will. Have a nice one.